Good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome here in Trieste. First of all, I would also like to thank immediately Mauro and his team for uh, hosting this uh, workshop and, and today, tomorrow, and for all the excellent work that they have been doing. Uh, before we go into the workshop as such, I would like to say a few things about my organization and to explain also why we go into this uh, specific subject. So uh, I am people, I have several people from my team here. We represent here the Joint Research Center, which is uh, part of the uh, European Commission. Uh, European Commission, as you know, is in, uh, headed by President uh, Juncker. And then we have the College of Commissioners, and my commissioner, our commissioner, is Mr. Navracic, who is responsible for education, culture, and uh, sport. And then we have, under the responsibility of Commissioner Navracic, there are a few, what we call them, Director General. One is the Joint Research Center, and the Director General uh, is uh, Vladimir uh, Shuka. Um, the Joint Research Center is a research organization. We, prov we do in-house research for the European Commission, and I will explain in a second what that means and what the topics are that we are covering. Just to say that we have the headquarters in Brussels, and then we have a number of, of, of uh, laboratories and sites uh, across Europe, um, in, in, in the Netherlands, in Germany, in Spain. The biggest one is in uh, Ispra. Uh, at the Lago Maggiore here in Italy. And uh, my office is actually is in Gale, north of Brussels, but I have also, and I will come back to that later, half of the team is working in uh, Ispra in Italy. Um, I think it's important to uh, highlight a little bit the vision and the mission of the organization. So we want to be, or we, the, the, the purpose is to be, to play a central role in creating, managing, and making sense, and that is extremely important, making sense of the collective scientific knowledge for better EU policy. So our role is on the one hand to generate knowledge, and on the other hand to transfer the knowledge in the first instance to the policy maker. The policy maker for us are the policy DGs within the European Commission, are the member states, are the European Parliament. And so it is our mission uh, as the, the Science and Knowledge Service to support the EU policies with independent evidence. And independent is an extremely important word in here. We are independent from uh, any other like uh, industrial NGOs or whatever. Of course, we are part of the European Commission, but we are independent from any external uh, uh, input. And we provide our support throughout the whole policy cycle. We are a very large organization. We have uh, around 3,000 people working within the GRC. Uh, as I've said, we are policy uh, neutral, and our work program is in relation to the policy uh, priorities of the European Commission. Uh, now, my, myself and my team, we are responsible for issues like health, food safety, chemical safety, and so on. And although these things are not the top, policy the top policy priorities for a number of reasons in the uh, Juncker Commission, these issues are very regularly discussed at the table of the college me meetings that they have uh, every weekend, uh, every, sorry, every Wednesday with the, uh, with the commissioners. So what we are working on is at the heart of the commission policy, although you will not find it in the high level policy uh, priorities. I think it's also very important to say that our organization has gone through a more modernization step. Uh, and I will show that in a minute uh, when I highlight the organogram. Don't look at the detail. You can't look at it. It's not important. But what is important is that everything in yellow here, those are our laboratories. So there are 2,500 people doing research. And they are doing research in a number of different areas linked to energy, to climate change, to chemical safety, food safety, health, and so on. And they are doing the, 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 the real uh, academic uh, and, and often also applied research. And what is new in the organization is this layer here, what we, the pink layer, which is an, 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 a layer of knowledge management. So for each of the areas that we are working with, like health, food safety, and so on, 
We have a unit that is then responsible for the knowledge management to understand what knowledge do we have within the organization and indeed outside the organization in the rest of the world and how can we capture that knowledge and make sense of it, transfer it to the policy makers. And that is precisely the role of my team and that is also precisely why we are here because we also would like not only to convey knowledge but also to understand what knowledge is available. That is also why we have gone into a partnership with our colleagues here from ICGEB who are extremely active in uh, scientific activities and whose knowledge and, and, and discussions with them are extremely important for our uh, portfolio. So we are responsible within this large organization of the knowledge management part. What does the GRC work about? These are the high-level policy uh, uh, priorities. I don't need to go into the details, but I would like to say a little bit what we are focusing on within my directorate. So this is the, all the people that you see on the left of my picture, so to speak. These are the people that are running the, the research the laboratories. So from left we have work which is done on health. These people are working on things like rare diseases, cancer registries, uh, health system, nutrition, and so on. So all that is within the, the health part. Then we have an area on consumer products. They cover, for example, nanotechnologies, extremely important, and there is a huge infrastructure within the organization who is working on nanotechnologies, also nanomedicine. Then we have uh, a group of people working on chemical safety, endocrine disruptors, but also classical chemical safety, uh, and also that group is responsible for toxicologic uh, assessment in general. So they are running an, uh, what we call a reference laboratory for the replacement of animal testing. The fourth one is on food fraud detection. This does not uh, require any further uh, explanation. So these are the people that are assisting member states to distinguish between what is the food uh, that complies with, with, with the labeling and, and the product requirements, and what is food and feed, which comes from fraud, from adulteration, uh, from fraudless practices, and trying to understand, because there is a huge uh, economic and innovation uh, price that is linked to that. Food and feed compliance, they are responsible for uh, the uh, various European legislations on food safety, they also run a number of reference laboratories, like, for example, the first one that was created was on uh, GMOs. Uh, that is their responsibility. And then we have another unit on reference materials. So that is the whole area that we are covering within the organization. But as I've said, we also look outside the organization. And we look at what is going on in all these different fields in the rest of the world. What are the competencies, that, the competencies that we are covering? Again, it's, it's a long list. Uh, I have colleagues here that are experts in bioinformatics, for example. We have people that are uh, working on computational toxicology. So again, we cover a large uh, area of competencies within our directorate. And again, all that competences we would like to apply to provide science for policy making. That is for us the let's say, the, the, the key issue. We have also extremely uh, uh, nice laboratories. We have broad uh, laboratory infrastructure, so we do a lot of in-house research as well. Uh, this is, for example, what you see on top there is part of the uh, nano uh, laboratory. Coming back to this uh, workshop, why do we hold this workshop? Uh, well, first of all, uh, genome editing and all the related technologies is something that we have been following from the very beginning. Uh, actually, we have been doing the, following the historical path from the, the, the late 80s, early 90s, the area of GMOs and so on, and then going into all the laboratory technologies for uh, changing agriculture crops, but also in medicine and, and so on and so forth. So we have a long history of, uh, of, of experience in, that, in the field of, let's say, uh, 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 genome uh, technologies related to agriculture, medicine, and so on. Genome editing, I don't need to tell you, you are much more the expert than I am, but this is a technology which is a disrupting technology. It's a very promising technology. And also, we would like to know what is going on in the academic world, but also what are the uh, issues at stake in relation to ethical implications, uh, 
uh, what are the safety implications, what are the innovation implications. So we would like to map uh, the, the, the state of the art of genome editing in, 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 in the broad sense uh, and, and trying to understand what is going on. Now today and tomorrow we focus this on this group of people and, and this is also linked to our uh, interest in working together with accession countries, neighboring countries and so on and to have a dialogue, a scientific and, and a technical dialogue with those uh, countries. And that is why we have the uh, privilege in having a number of you from those countries uh, here. Why such a workshop? It's, it's a two-way interaction. It is for us, we would like to explain to you what we know about the state of the art and therefore we have been inviting some of the top experts in Europe and abroad to give you presentations on uh, what is going on in the laboratory, but also uh, in the other areas that I was describing. And again, I, we also would like to learn what can, where can we take it from here? What is the message that we also can take home? What is the message that we convey to our colleagues within the European Commission, but also uh, outside of the European Commission? I don't need to hide that today genome editing is uh, an issue which is heavily being discussed at the regulatory level, and we will hear more about that. Uh, at the scientific level, at the technological level. And again, as I've said, we are somewhere in this nexus between science, policy, regulation, and that is also important for us that we collect all this uh, common knowledge uh, in that particular area. Where do we would like to go from here? Or what do we want to know? As I've said, we would like to understand the, the, the scientific and technological landscape, and we would like to hear some hands-on experiences uh, for that. We would like to talk about issues like has, what are uh, eventual hazards associated with it. If we take it a step forward, what are the risks associated with it? What are the ethical concerns uh, associated with it? But also what are, the, what are the possibilities? So it's not that we would like to look at, let's say, the possible downside of the technology. We would also very much like to hear what we can expect from the technology, where the technology may lead us in the next five to 10 years from now. What, what can we expect? And all that for us, as I've said, is important to feed it into the regulatory landscape. What knowledge do we have? What knowledge is required? Where are the gaps? Where are the strengths? Where are the weaknesses? All these things for us are extremely important to map and also to convey eventually uh, to you. And then what are the options? Uh, not only what and where are the data, not only uh, what is missing, but also how can we make sense of all this? How can we convey this to uh, the stakeholders that are maybe less familiar with the technology, that are maybe less aware of all these technical details? How can we convey the messages to them? And how can we take this initiative one step further? Um, we have now a group of about 30 people uh, that we were able to bring together here uh, I, I, this is not the end of the story, this is only the beginning of the story and I'm sure that from here we will develop and we will discuss this and we have ample uh, opportunities tomorrow to discuss further possibilities on where to take it from here. We would like to have also some two, three concrete take-home messages after this workshop to see where are we going and what are going to be the next steps. So from my side, again, I would like to uh, thank uh, Mauro Jaka and his team for uh, putting this all to making this possible. Also, the people of my team that are here. I hope we will have two exciting uh, days ahead of us, and I'm certainly looking forward to this dialogue. Let's keep it extremely informal. Let's interact as much as possible. Let's benefit as much as possible from everybody's experience here, and let us enjoy the discussions as much as let us enjoy Trieste, for example, tonight. Uh, and maybe uh, after the meeting uh, for some of you. So this is uh, as far as I wanted to say as an, uh, a point of introduction. I would like to thank you all warmly for having taken the effort to come here and to join us. Uh, as I've said, uh, I'm very enthusiastic about this and uh, I hope that we will have a couple of concrete uh, outcomes tomorrow after this meeting. Having said so, Mauro, uh, maybe you would like to introduce your organization. Again, from my side, very much uh, uh, welcome here, and I'm looking forward to this meeting. Thank you.